firearm season in Pennsylvania. Outside of the rut in November, this is the best time of year to swing your luck for an entire season in just mere seconds. With the ability to be effective at a range well beyond what is feasible with the bow and arrow, hunters flock to the woods on opening day in hopes of getting that opportunity to wrap their hands around the antlers of a PA buck. While it may not quite resemble the peaceful morning calm of an early November hunt, there is nothing that compares to that feeling in the air waiting for the sun to rise on opening morning. It is almost magical. As Kyla and I made our way to the blind in the morning darkness, that familiar feeling like a kid on Christmas crept in, and as the sun begins to rise, I just can't wait to get eyes on that first deer of the day. It's finally here. There seemed to be a deer around every corner this morning. There just has to be a shooter buck that'll move through eventually. Good. 
movement seemed to slow down until around noon, but when it finally picked back up again, a buck I've encountered numerous times made yet another appearance. He's definitely, definitely a good one. Am I in your way? No, you're good. Don't worry about me. Oh, he's down there. I see him. You see him? I don't know if you're comfortable shooting that far. He might come closer to him. I just want to see him in the scope. Okay. Nice. That's the blade of nine, baby. No, it's not. That's double edge, I swear to God. Okay. If you have a shot there, that's a good one. Hmm? If you have a shot there, you can put it right in the shoulder. I don't know why I can't see him on the scope. He's quartered a little, isn't he? Yeah, right in the shoulder, that would be good. You sure? Yeah. Enjoying the meat hunters so far? Then be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for tons of other hunting content and stick around for all the upcoming hunting adventures this year and beyond. Like us on Facebook for regular news updates and follow us on Instagram to keep up with where we're hunting currently. Now, back to the hunt. Kyla is trying to line up a shot through the brush and trees on what could be her first ever buck as he slowly weaves back and forth a hundred yards out. Whatever his reasoning, he decided to turn and head back to where he had come from. Unfortunately, that would be the last we would see of the buck that day. Many of you probably know the feeling. As tough as it was to watch a buck I've chased for several years walk out of sight, I can't help but be proud of Kyla for not rushing the shot and not taking a shot she wasn't comfortable with. It'll be a tough lesson, without a doubt, but we still have two weeks to put lessons like this to use. I was, it was tough to watch him walk away, but I would be crushed if we were following little speckled blood not finding them. Well, so. that's what I was worried about, because I know from your angle you could see so much better, but since I was in the other panel, yeah. I had a more narrow shot, and I did not know where he was specifically standing when he was looking at us. Yeah. Like, I could see his body, sure, or whatever, but I didn't want to hit the wrong thing, and I don't want that to be one of those traumatic things gone wrong yeah. with your first shot animal, so. No, I was just... proud of you. You got the safe off and everything. You were ready and then he moved. You didn't rush it. <laughs> but the good news is, after he circled around chasing that doe, he went up the hill. There was a shot immediately, but it, I thought it was back here. I almost cried <laughs> seeing him literally from the hill trot away and not even like five seconds later hearing a shot. I was like. It was immediate. But I, I thought it was back this way, so I'm pretty sure he's fine. And he's chasing that doe, so I think it's tough to get a mature buck, multiple sightings sometimes this time of year, but if there's a doe he's with, I wouldn't be shocked at all if she comes back through here and he's tailing her, so. Hopefully. Hopefully that's the doe with the two fawns that we always see down here. It could be. Because the two fawns were by themselves today, and they went up the hill by themselves, so. Yeah. We'll see. The following morning, we were at it once again. And much like the opener, we had eyes on a buck early. I know what buck that is. I saw him in archery. He's like a 
five point. He's got four on one side and a spike on the other. It's up to you. I think that might be a shooter. Though it may have been a good first year for Kyla, it never presented a shot. And besides, her sights were set on the one that got away now. With no more buck sightings, we decided to make the move to the new property for the evening. Despite sign the deer were using the area, we'd head back without so much as another glimpse of the deer. The next morning, Kyla and I hunted the new property once again, thinking that maybe the sign we saw was from deer moving through earlier in the day. With the opportunity to hunt somewhere new, Isaac, despite having COVID, made the difficult trip to the blind we had been hunting from the previous two days. Once again, the location provided plenty of sightings between the deer and turkeys. As things seemed to be settling down, however, Isaac heard a shot nearby and got ready for a potential opportunity. Should be able to find exactly where she was standing just from the tracks in the snow and hopefully blood so let's go take a look
so many scattered tracks here I was having a heck of a time trying to figure out which one was her but just found some blood here so we'll follow it up through here and hopefully hopefully she's not too far away my first doe tag filled. I don't actually know where I hit her, but I have to assume it was in the lungs because the blood coming out of her nose is obviously a good indicator of that. But, uh, yeah, that worked out great. Hey, I've been sitting out here since, since, since light this morning, so it was about four hours, but, but yeah, she came through right about 50, 60 yards. Then I shot her broadside and she only ran at most 30 or 40 yards after that so I couldn't be happier. I obviously wanted to have this first doe a couple months ago but this is where we're at so this is what we got to deal with. Still got a couple weeks left here rifle season so hopefully we can build some more. But for now I'm just happy I got one. And if you're wondering, yes, Isaac Shot did indeed tear a chunk of fabric from my blind. A small price to pay for seeing him finally fill that tag that he's worked so hard for this season. Still got a couple weeks left for your rifle season, so hopefully we can fill some more. But for now, I'm just happy I got one. After seeing Isaac's success, I was motivated to get back out the following day for an all-day sit. But as more and more hunters fill their tags, as well as leave the woods to go back to work after the weekend, deer sightings become less common, and I'd leave the woods without so much as a glimpse at a deer. On December 1st, I'd head out again, still hoping for a shot at filling a buck tag. Well, this is where things start to get pretty tired in terms of trying to fill a buck tag. It's Wednesday, December 1st, and in my opinion, it's about this point every season where it starts to get real tough. With multiple doe tags still left in my pocket, at some point here, I'm just going to have to start looking to fill the freezer, but I think I'm still going to focus on bucks, at least today. Fresh snow and all, so we'll sit back and see what happens. Fingers crossed. When a large group of deer began to move through, with a mature doe leading the way, I decided, for better or for worse, to wait and see if a buck would be behind them. These deer are undoubtedly being pushed through by other hunters, and you just never know what could step out in a situation like this.
four deer keep appearing, but there still seems to be a lack of antlers. Finally, I see what I was hoping for, but it's headed back the other direction. He was gone so quickly that I was never able to determine if he was in fact a shooter. And even if he was, there was no clear shot opportunity. As the does move away, I lose sight of the buck for good, and I'm left to consider where my focus should be at this stage of the season. The next day as temperatures were rising, Kyla and I headed to a stand overlooking a greenfield, and deer were moving surprisingly early. All the wishing and all the willpower in the world wouldn't change any of the young deer into mature ones though, and once again, we would go back empty handed. It is at this point that firearm season can in some ways become a grind, as opportunities become less and less frequent. Isaac's Day Harvest serves as a reminder of just how quickly things can happen. A simple case of right place, right time can be all it takes to turn an entire season around.